Where birds are set off. For forest to pass. And we're frankly shitting ourselves. <laughs> Quite a few people have gone through already, so I mean, it's, yeah, it's doable, but yeah. Still scary. Half past five in the morning and the snow is nice and crunchy. I don't know if you can see that Jan was pointing out to us this morning. He saw these avalanches or snow slides coming down. You can see them over there on the hill. All these traces. This all makes walking during the snow melt so dangerous because <laughs> this could be happening on the mountain we're trying to walk on. And it's mainly because we it happens anyway when snow melt starts, but because we had this bizarre weather effect where the snow melt had started and then 10 days of winter storms came in. So fresh snow fell on top of old snow. Wow, that was sketchy coming up. Uh, having a quick snack break because I'm feeling all dizzy. We're nearly at the top. Fingers Maybe crossed. Yeah, that's the art, but. Or the dangerous bit, or the scariest bit. Depends what you want to call it. <laughs> the approach to the shoot is largely snow free. That's the good news. Bad news is I didn't realize you had to climb up and then down first. That's hard for getting ready. And Jan. Uh, I don't like the up bit. I thought you just went straight across. <laughs> that was harsh. This is crazy. It was, it was more it's funny, it's like the whole path coming up was harder yeah. than just a little yeah. Yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah. But this is this is why there's so few accidents on the shooter thing, is because everybody's aware how dangerous it is. Yeah. So everybody's being sensible. Yeah. So stepping off that's always the difficult bit. <laughs> oh and the keeping your balance. <laughs> Don't fall now. Right, we've made it over the chute. Not quite a top, but we did it. This man here is getting a kiss. Look a bit. I think they won't post off today. We did it indeed. We conquered that mountain. I know. down. Come on. We started our drop from Forrester now. There's the lake barely visible. But yeah, look at those views, as Brian would say. Mountain, yes. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I can see. There goes Mike from Hike with Mikes. So, the ride on my ass pad it is. It looks like we're glissading down Forrester because apparently the walk on the other side is horribly slushy already. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're picking up too much speed, so. And there go Hard Rock and Jan. As you can tell with the brave ones, we're staying back and watching everybody else do it first. Yeah. So we can see where they fall. <laughs> He's video himself. Whoops. 
Oops. Oh, he's fallen. Oof. That's not good. He's lost his camera. We shan't be using our camera. No. Definitely not. <laughs> he's used his phone, I think. Yeah. He's oh, but he's going straight back on, so he can't have been a bad fall. This is... Wow. That is fast. Yeah, he's I picking up some speed, that's for sure. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm glad I got my ice pick. Yeah. He's going way too fast. Maybe when he passed there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's that dead. Holy shit. Yeah. He's, a, he's a careful hiker, is Jan. He's not into the idea of glissading, that's for sure. As are we, really. He's going down on the path now. I'm not sure that's going to work, but... Okay. Oh, he's got good control. He does my test bikes. In yeah. He's going nice and slow, nice and slow and controlled. So as a, this man forgot to film me glissading down. I just thought I'll show you the slides, trails behind. This is how far down we came. A long way. It's a long way. I mean, it's a good thing he didn't film me, to be honest, because I was a disgrace to the glissading world. I was so scared, I was just like, <laughs> inch. Did stop and pick up a, a wrapper that someone dropped to yes, slide some, down. Yes, somebody lost no a cliff trail. bar wrapper. So I stopped my glissade to pick it up because, you know, we leave no trace, even when glissading. <laughs> Brian, on the other hand, picked up my water bottle that went way ahead of me. <laughs> so we're reunited now. We just uh, crossed Bob's Creek on a fairly easy log bridge and both Brad and I needed several attempts. If we needed any more proof we're making the right decision. Leaving the Sierras, that was it. We're, our nerves are obviously gone, our confidence is gone. And now this, our lunch terrain. I mean, this has obviously happened quite some, some time ago. Not yesterday, but wow. This is a dangerous place in the winter. And I know it's supposed to be summer, but, you know. <laughs> We've dropped quite a bit in elevation now. Probably around 3,000 foot. So the snow, while still slippy as heck and slushy, is at least not six foot deep when you're postal. <laughs> but there's water everywhere. Like melt water, so... You're constantly um, crossing little, I don't know, how to describe the mini meadows that are basically flooded. And, um, and of course still no trace of the pass. This is our campsite <coughs> for the night. Up there. Just about made it work. There's loads more flat spots over there, but little soaking with snow mode. So we made this little pitch work for us. And I'm just about to remove the bear canisters from the tent. So we set off from our campsite that we think was somewhere at 776.5. Good hook said we're still there. <laughs> yeah. Good hooks has still got us there 24 hours later, but you know. I think we've complained enough about Gutex for one day. Um, so we started our approach to Forrester Pass 
um, and made actually really good progress on the frozen snow. Such good progress, in fact, that we're not sure we really were at that campsite um, where Gatwick said we were, because we sort of reached the bottom of the approach here, inside an hour, and that should have been about two miles away. Um, but maybe, maybe we just made reasonable progress for once. And then we started our climb, which was again, I mean, most of the early switchbacks were just guesswork. So we just followed other people's trails. And then, however, you picked up the trail properly on the last couple of switchbacks. And went over the shoot of this. And reached Forest, the top of Forrester Pass. Actually, relatively problem free. It was scary, and, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Um, all these crackling around on snow covered paths is not fun. But it was, um, yeah, we made it to the highest point of the PZT 13,120 foot. And just because the Sierras really hate us and want us to leave, as soon as we reached the top, and had our little sort of celebratory photo shoot. A strong wind came in and froze us half to death, so we started our descent really, really quickly. Again, just following other people's footsteps, hoping that they were going roughly the right way. Um, we did, I don't know if the path goes down this way somewhere, but we did end up going down the chute, which I think is, not the chute, um, the glissade thing, which I think is sort of that way mainly because one of the guys that had gone ahead came back while we, we were still resting here somewhere and told us basically not to bother because the slushingness on this side was so bad already that everybody was post to their knees and he recommended going down the glissade which we tried and failed miserably as <laughs> you saw the footage <laughs> so we got down and then obviously had to follow the footsteps again to regain the PCT at some stage and yeah, it was, it's just a bit, literally as soon as we left Forrester Pass, the slushiness started. And it was really early, I think we, we got up there for eight or something like that, nine o'clock. So, it's just, yeah, it's just unpleasant walking in the Sierras at the moment, it really is. I'm sure the Sierras are beautiful, but walking in them at the moment, it just sucks. Um, we, um, we stopped somewhere eventually, out of sheer desperation to have breakfast, I think we, we realized we'd walked for six hours without having a break. Again, this happens a lot at the moment. We're skipping at least a meal a day, not, you know, to get anywhere, but because we just can't find anywhere to stop. That's not steep, snow-covered, horrible. Or, you know, in the middle of a river. And yes, uh, I had forgotten about that. We had another stream crossing. That's the one, as, as I was saying, that I mean, there was a really good log bridge, really, I mean, ideal size, ideal everything. And both Brian and I were terrified to go over. I mean, yesterday it just shook us to the core. Just one more reason why we're heading out of here. Um, and then the slushiness continued to an unknown degree. I mean, we literally don't know fully where we are because, you know, I don't know whether we mentioned it, but gut hooks doesn't effing work. It still has it on the other side of Forrester Pass. We know we've come past this gate, and we think we're now at this campground here, which is a little short of where we wanted to go. We wanted to go to the these ones here. Um, but again, you know, slushiness. We would have had to go another mile, and none of us were feeling it. Plus the weather came in. It started to rain and then to hail. Um, surprisingly. So this is where we are now, set up. And um, on the far side of the creek, we've just heard an avalanche come down. I mean, literally, just now, shattering trees 